So we look at silver as the critical mineral, the mineral that is the glue behind any other metal that classifies itself as a decarbonization metal. And welcome to the uh, one to one global online precious metals event. Um, today I have Michael DiRienzo, Executive Director at the Silver Institute, joining me to talk all about silver. So thanks, Michael, for joining us today. Well, thank you, Amy. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for uh, joining. So um, just to, I suppose, kick things off, maybe we can talk a little bit about, you know, the supply demand outlook for silver the, um, you know, the pricing mm -hmm. forecast moving forward. Sure. All right. So, you know, it's hard to go and look forward in 2023 without taking somewhat of a look back to 2022. And we'll be putting out our final numbers on April 19th when we release the World Silver Survey. Um, and then again on the 21st, when we, we release the same publication in uh, Mexico City. But the point is, is that 2022 global Silver demand reached an all-time high of about 1.24 billion ounces. Every key segment, apart from photography, grew in 2022. Industrial demand grew to almost 540 million ounces. Silver jewelry and silverware surged by about 29% and 72%. And uh, we saw the silver market transition into a deficit. Um, in 2021, and that grew to about over 250 million ounces last year. So this year, we think the deficit is going to decline a bit, but not by much. We think that industrial demand is going to achieve an all-time high of about 550 million ounces, yet we still believe that global total demand for silver will dip a bit this year, um, even so it will be the second highest year on record okay. and that's mainly due to india you know india had a banner year in 2020 in 2022 and uh we think that their jewelry and silverware offtake will be a little short of 2022 numbers okay interesting um so maybe you can get a little bit into, you know, the fundamentals for um, actually mining silver. So typically sure. it's seen as a byproduct of other metals. So mm -hmm. how, how does the industry actually focus on growing, growing the supply when it's needed? Well, you're right. It is 70% of silver comes from byproduct metal mining activities. So whether that be gold, whether that be lead and zinc or, or tin and copper, um, Silver, primary silver mines only account for 29 to 30% of global mine supply that comes to the market. Now, these companies who are involved, companies that consider themselves primary silver miners, and we have many of them as members, um, will always look at the financial feasibility of uh, you know, extracting more silver on that property and so forth. But they're also benefiting from the other mining activities. You know, when they're mining silver, they're also getting zinc. Um, some of our companies make a big profit off their zinc mining. Uh, but quite frankly, many of those consider themselves to be pure silver miners. And last year we saw about a 1% increase in uh, global silver mine supply. Uh, that's basically due to ramp up of production in certain countries like Mexico and Peru. They were somewhat hamstrung as a result of the COVID restrictions back in 2020 and 2021. And this year we expect uh, silver uh, mine supply to increase by an even greater amount, by about three to 4%, maybe even 5%. Um, it may be reaching its highest level since 2016. And this is primarily a result of operations ramping up in Mexico and increased byproduct output in Chile. Okay, interesting. So, I mean, you've talked a bit about, you know, how, how supply can grow. What are some of the, say, geopolitical factors or other sure. economic factors that are impacting mine supply? Well, mining, not unlike any other industry, is always faced with geopolitical issues. And if you just look at what's taking place in Peru right now, we think the first quarter output in Peru will be somewhat stymied. 
based on the, the geopolitical activities that are taking place there. We also think that uh, what's taking place in the Ukraine and, and Russia could have an effect on, on silver supply. You look at Russia, you look at Poland, um, two top 20 silver producers, um, this could have an impact. Um, other areas also could be, could be uh, affected, but that set aside, we still believe that uh, mine output will increase this year, possibly to its highest level since 2016. Okay, great. And so um, shifting gears a bit, uh, there's a lot of talk, you know, about um, silver's kind of dual role, uh, both mm -hmm. as a precious and an industrial metal. Um, maybe you can dive a little bit deeper into both of these different roles and how, how um, <clears throat> I suppose that impacts the profile of, of the metal. Sure. So it's interesting that silver does have that duality. It is both the precious metal on one hand and an industrial metal on the second. And there's several reasons why. Silver is a store of value. It has been for centuries. Um, last year, physical investment in silver, so the coin and bar sales of silver, reached a new record of well over 350 million ounces. Um, and support has come from many aspects, including um, inflation fears, the, the, the previously mentioned war in, in the Ukraine, um, an overall mistrust in government, um, even here so, more so in the United States. And you see a lot of people buy silver on price dips. Um, it's a highly uh, speculative market. Uh, it, it's a highly volatile market when compared to other precious metals. But uh, people tend to buy silver and when you look at exchange traded products, for example, those people who buy silver through that mechanism, they're really sticky. Um, even though we saw some sales outward of ETPs last year, by and large, when the silver investor in exchange traded products buys and holds. Um, with respect to this year, we think that number may come down a little bit, but nonetheless, we're already seeing in the first two months of 2023, robust demand for silver bars and silver coins. Now, turning the corner as an industrial metal, as you know, over 50% of silver demand goes to industrial components. And that can be anywhere from a computer, a mobile phone, um, electronic switches and so forth. You know, it's an essential component in, in, in many uh, industries. Silver truly surrounds us all. It's in our light switches, it's in our computers, it's in our monitors, it's what it is enabling me to be here in Washington, D.C., and you're being um, in Australia and doing what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. So the primary reason is of this high electrical conductivity. Um, it's being used in so many different ways. I encourage your listeners to go subscribe at free for free to our Silver News, which is a bi-monthly publication which highlights all the new and exciting uses of silver um, throughout the world. Okay, perfect. And um, I mean, the global energy transition is a huge topic mm -hmm. uh, for the mining industry today and, and the way that the various metals will be used. Can you talk a bit about silver's role uh, within this? Sure. And that, that's a great question. It's one of our focal points for 2023 and beyond. Um, you know, silver is, as I mentioned, the best conductor of electricity. Um, it's used across a variety of decarbonization applications, um, primarily in photovoltaics. Uh, photovoltaics, if you go back 10, 12 years ago, we didn't even have a category in the World Silver Survey for this, but it has grown over the years. I believe we're looking at about uh, 122, 130 million ounces of silver being consumed in this one application globally uh, last year. And that number is going to grow significantly in 2023 and beyond. And the reason is, is that in order to take the energy and store the energy, these solar cells are coated with a silver paste which allows the electrical conductivity to turn that into energy um, when called upon. And it's not just photovoltaics. I mean, 
well, let me go back one second here on photovoltaics. China last year had a 62% increase in their uh, 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 installations of uh, solar panels throughout the country. The United States was not that far behind. In the United States, we're seeing certain states that are mandating solar power technology, not only in residential um, buildings, but also in office buildings, California, Massachusetts, and others to follow. But mm -hmm. when you look at the automotive industry, you know, you look at uh, electric vehicles, you look at battery electric vehicles, BEVs or EVs or hybrid vehicles, those are requiring more and more silver, not in the battery, but in the components of the car, the infotainment systems, the, uh, uh, the safety systems, uh, your uh, rear view mirrors, your ability to look at the cameras, those all require a connection. And silver is that connection that makes it all work. So 60 million ounces of silver used in 2022 um, with only about 4% of cars sold um, globally that use our, our electric vehicles. This number is only gonna grow. Uh, we project 90 million ounces by 2025 and we'll see beyond there. Okay, that's amazing. Um, so my last question was really just about um, ESG considerations for the industry. Sure. So, um, you know, we've seen a lot of headway being made in, you know, the green steel um, industry and um, others and, and copper as well. So um, is the silver industry focusing on, I suppose, greener mining and um, I suppose decarbonizing the actual oh, yeah. operations? Absolutely. And, you know, we just put up a section on our website a year and a half ago on silver and sustainability, which addresses the commitment that our member companies have to ESG efforts. Shortly, we'll be releasing a report entitled Silver and the Low Carbon Economy. And that's going to talk specifically to uh, silver's role in decarbonization at these particular mine sites. It will also address the great work our member companies are doing on a mine by mine and company by company basis to uh, more, uh, I would say, make their operations more green. You look at some of these folks that are, are, are switching to solar panels and uh, other activities on the actual mine site itself. And then we're gonna turn it around and talk about how silver is used in the green um, economy going forward. In addition to that report, we're putting out another report later this year, which will address silver's role in the green economy, focusing heavily on electric vehicles, the infrastructure that supports electric vehicles, solar panels. We're going to take a look at the, for the first time is how much silver is used in uh, wind power energy. And of course, we're going to look at nuclear energy. There's a small component of silver which is required in nuclear energy um, is not as significant or as big as you would find in solar or in automotive uh, EVs, but still silver plays a component. So we look at silver as the critical mineral, the mineral that is the glue behind any other metal that classifies itself as a decarbonization metal. You can't do it without silver. All right. Well, that is a, a, a perfect... Uh ending spot for us um, you know you. definitely a lot to kind of keep keep an eye on uh moving forward and maybe we can host some of those um reports in the essay uh later in the year uh, but Michael, thank you for joining us here today you're very very welcome amy enjoy your day